Hello, you have stumbled onto another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we strive for ways to achieve those two goals, and we invite our friends on to help us. And today, where we're talking, we're going to be talking about continuing, actually, our conversation about ending, how to end the year and how to start the new year off right, and I'm talking today with my good friend, Anne-Marie Smith, Anne-Marie Smith, <laughs> so Manny, you have to take that out. And I'm talking today with my good friend, Anne-Marie Cavana sweet But before we go into our conversation, I first have to say how excited I am because Feedspot has chosen the Get You Filled podcast as number 27 on its 70 top. Uh, I have to get this right here. Hold on a second. Uh, number 70. No, number 27. Number 27, the top 70 podcast. Hold on, I'm going to start this from scratch today. I'm sorry. Let me just find it. Okay. Okay. So before we get started, I have to say how excited and honored and like wowed I am by um, because this podcast, Get Your Filled podcast, has been chosen as number 27 in the top 70 podcasts in the early retirement and financial independent, independent podcasts. And like, okay, there are like 1.4 million podcasts out there. And for me, for this podcast to be number 27 is like such a wonderful compliment, such a testament to the guests that we have had, the high quality, awesome guests that we've had, and to you for listening. And I don't know who voted on these things, but I'm extremely, extremely grateful to you. And one thing that we're doing in 2021 is kind of being a little bit more women focused. I mean, my, my book, which is called Empower Your Inner Millionaire, A Woman's Guide to Financial Freedom Through Real Estate is obviously woman focused. And a lot of the women, a lot of the people who we have talked about money with have been women, but we haven't like said, oh, this is by women, for women. And I don't think it's that, um, it's not like men can't listen, obviously. We love it when men listen, but Finance for women is a little bit different. There's a little bit more. Um, it's, it's a little bit. So Anne-Marie, feel free to pop in here anytime and talk about like why. This is not the point of this podcast, but I just want to say, to, you know, get this out there. Like, do you feel, do you agree with me that money issues and money management and the whole financial thing is different for women? Oh, it definitely is. There is absolutely no doubt. We come from a different place. Uh, <clears throat> this, this has been occurring a little bit in my life lately. Uh, women my age, our age, older women, women that are thinking about retirement, have retired, or some that age, are coming from a generation where some of our mothers never held a job, always served our dads. Um, you know, I, I saw something on Facebook this week. One girl, somebody posted that um, I'm on a podcast. So here's a here's uh, another. Whoops, <laughs> you ran away. Um, <laughs> yeah, he has to get his makeup done. Uh, so some of the younger generation women don't understand that mothers like mine told me that I'm supposed to get up in the morning and put my makeup on and put my happy face before my husband gets up. And the reality today is uh, no. <laughs> this is not happening. This, 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 is not, this is not the way it is. I am way more powerful than that. I am way more capable than that. And Yes, if I had a husband and I wanted to make him happy, and if that was what made him happy, then maybe once in a while. But it's not um, something that. So, so the, the point is here: we 
our age group are carrying something that I think we are fighting that young women might not be, uh, might not have to deal with. Uh, you know, uh, same thing with the, the whole feminist thing. A lot of the younger girls don't seem to understand and, and are not subjected to it as we have been in the past. So I think it's, it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing to make it for women, by women. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like I said, men can listen and they're going to definitely get a lot of benefit from it. But, and, and then there'll be the additional benefit of some extra whatever information. But you're right. It, I think because most of us were raised by people who were raised by people who were from the Depression era, who lived through the Depression. So that had an impact. And also, like you say, you know, they told me when I was in high school that I was supposed to go to, you know, like find a great, go to college so I could meet a great guy and get my MRS degree. And then, then I'd be all set, which, you know, I, I, okay, I did that, but it didn't really stick. <laughs> well, I didn't even do that, but I remember definitely a uh, home ec class. They don't, they don't even do that anymore. Uh, typing class. Yeah. Every girl had to take typing class because you were going to be a secretary at some point. Exactly. You, you had to do that for somebody. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do very well at college, but I was never told that it was to get an MRS degree. It was more to definitely to get an education uh, to be able to pass it down, to be a well-rounded mom. Knowledgeable. I mean, <laughs> you can so you help can your kids do, with your homework. Oh, okay. So great. you can help your kids with your homework. Although apparently nowadays with this common core and all that stuff, nobody can help their kids anymore. <laughs> so there you go. You don't need college. But this is the complaint I'm seeing from the, the younger generation. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Well, that, thank you. I'm glad we got that. I'm glad we got that out there and in there and, you know, that everybody had a chance to hear about this. Uh, transition or evolution or however you want to look at it because I do think it's very important and I think I think it influences us too in the decisions oh, yeah. we make and the way we make them when you have a money conversation with a man uh, there's there's a lot of to me sometimes it seems that there is a lot of stuff that that is mis I don't want to say misunderstood because there's not really a lot of misunderstanding, but there is definitely a difference in the understanding of how things work or how things should be. So, yeah, I don't think I certainly nobody told me about, you know, saving for my retirement or planning for anything at all. It was just like how to budget, like household budgeting, you know, keeping my checkbook up to date and that kind of stuff. But that's like, it's the difference between being a bookkeeper and being an accountant, I think, you know, as far as that goes, like, you're not thinking about cash flow and, you know, I'm just, as long as I can pay for my groceries, I guess, then I'm all set, you know, so. Right. But it, yeah, you're right. I mean, definitely. I don't even think my mother showed me how to balance a checkbook. I was aware that there was such a thing as financial investment because my dad would say, Oh, I'm checking on my investments, but not really what it was, what it was doing for him or all that stuff. It yeah. was, um, a lot of it was kind of taken care of. And and then at some point reality hit and, and reality hits, but, and, and you don't always understand it either. I, I personally think that I was fortunate enough to get to make friends that helped me along the way and actually set me on the right path. Mm. Uh, I could definitely have made way more mistakes, uh, financial mistakes, and I've done financial mistakes. There's no doubt about it. But uh, somehow there's 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 big um, uh, and it, I what's the word when you internalize the effect that you have on your own uh destiny your yeah. own financial destiny yeah and i was i can safely say that i was 50 when i figured that out oh, that's cool. that would be fair to say that i was 50 when i sort suddenly said oh wow you know 
I'm 15. I better right. save some money, man. <laughs> right. Actually, you know, talking about turning a certain age, uh, when you think that you might live until you're 80, what is the average now? 80 something. If my doctor tells me you're healthy, you'll live to 100. Well, you know, that's like another 40 years. Right. Exactly. So there's plenty of time to do all kinds of funky stuff in here. And, um, but you have to be able to pay for it. And <laughs> that's it's not much it. fun to get up at six in the morning anymore or dance all night and get up at six o'clock exactly. in the morning. Well, and that's, that's what happened to me too. You know, when I turned 50, you know the story. When I turned 50, I was in this whole, oh my God, my life is over. I'm a total loser. I never did anything. And now blah, blah, blah. And then two weeks later, well, two, I guess three weeks later, I went to my aunt's hundredth birthday party. And all of a sudden I just had this like, whoop, you know, like giant paradigm shift, like, holy shit, I still have 50 more years to get this thing right. And that's when I really started to educate myself on, you know, and really, and, and just started suddenly had to get intentional about my life because I realized, you know, 50 years is not that long. So luckily she lived to 105. So that's my goal. And so I have basically 48 years <laughs> left yes. and you're right you, you know some of your doctor says oh you know you're going to live to be 100 well no sorry i can't afford to live to be 100 <laughs> well, the problem i you know what i'm finding out right now is is uh yeah okay i want to live to 105 uh how is it gonna come down because there is no doubt that there is decline as much as you fight it there is decline so, and yeah so that's that's the that's the thing we want to do we we'll do it well so this is a perfect segue into our 2021 goals because one of my things this year so i have two um i set goals in all 10 areas of my life and next week we're going to talk to ann mcneil who's going to talk about the 10 areas and the whole survey and all the stuff that she's done and that's the annual meeting that i go to in in january in florida in boca so can, you, can you say the 10 things because i got a new planner and it's got nine areas so uh oh you're missing an area <laughs> i'm missing an area how am i going to find out which area i'm missing so you have to tune in next week because I don't have my survey handy. <laughs> tune in next week. And you'll hear all 10 areas and what you should be doing. We'll go through the survey with you. Okay, but yeah, so. she's got, it's basically all things in her life that she has discovered. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I need to do this. Okay. I'm going to put that on the survey to make sure that I'm doing it every year. And you know, this check, like, do I have insurance? Do I have whatever? But um, so for my physical uh, goals, I have two of them. One is that I want to be able to cross my legs and touch my hands on the floor with my legs straight. Do you know what I mean? Like okay. not just touch my toes, but touch my, put my full hand on the floor, not with just my legs straight, but with my legs crossed. So this okay. is a big, big stretch. Yes. I can, I can do it already with like my fingertips, but I, I want to be able to put my palm on the ground when I am right. So that's one. And the other is this year I gave up white flour. And, okay. and I know what you're thinking, which is that the last time you were over, we were eating ginger snap cookies, which have white flour, but it took me a little bit longer to realize that, like, I'm thinking bread. And then I was like, oh, shit, those cookies have white flour, too. Are they, so, are they really? Yes. And that's what little by little I've been like, oh, gosh, I can't eat that. You know, even like little things like, you know, um, licorice all sorts, like black licorice has flour. So I, I, um, I was in the store the other day because last year I gave up candy. So this year I can have candy. So I was in the store and I was looking at some candy that I thought maybe I should might have missed from last year. And I found licorice all sorts, which is a, a candy that I used to love when I lived in London. And I was like, oh, my God. So I got some and I was sharing them with John and we're eating them. And I and I look at the because he was looking at the package to see where they were made because they taste exactly like the ones from England. Yeah. And then I looked at the package and I saw right there in big letters, you know, wheat flour. And I was like, crap. <laughs> wheat flour. So, so wheat flour is white flour? 
Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, most flour is white flour. What they do, and, and I shouldn't even be eating whole wheat stuff, although I did have whole wheat French toast this morning, because what they do with that is they actually strip off the, you know, they, they basically make white flour and then add some of the, the bran or whatever back into it. So it's not any, mm -hmm. not particularly healthier than regular white flour. But so what I'm going to do as soon as I get my stove is start experimenting with different kinds of flours and baking different things and stuff like that. In the meantime, I'm basically living on rice cakes and <laughs> rice crackers. And stuff well, like that. You could use rice flour and almond flour and all that stuff. Oh, Market Basket has got a nice selection. <laughs> yeah, I actually have some all ready to go, but I, I don't have a stove yet. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you can come to my house. There's quarantine here. <laughs> it's quarantine here too. We're supposed to be quarantining too because I went from Florida. Yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. So yes, I am. So what else we have to do for the new year? I'm good because my take has always been the first month from the first of the year to my birthday. That is the month to come up with resolutions or goals or whatever. So I do still have a little bit of time to get ready for this. That's a good idea, actually. That, that, for me, it's been, you know, I, I kind of at some point you realize that everybody, oh, on the first of the first of the year, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But then you're recovering from the holidays and all that stuff and you don't start and then you get discouraged and then you don't do it and all that stuff. And I, so for me, it works out. My birthday is a month later and so we start the new year. You can enjoy your birthday in case you happen to give something up that you want to do for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But no, you know what? And I, I was listening to you saying last year I gave up candy this year. I'm like, I'm not too much into giving up things. Although now, actually this year, I think one of the things that, that has come up a lot is making very small steps. And... Uh, like I was thinking about that the other day. I don't drink soda anymore. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have a taste for it. Um, I, I'll have club soda. I'll mix it with my juice and everything, but cola, Dr. Pepper, which I used to love, the grape soda. Actually, they all gross me out now. Well, this, it took a while to get there. Yeah. Uh, you know, at first it was just saying no once in a while, and then it was saying no more often, and now it's, the last time I got a Dr. Pepper or something, I barely maybe took two sips and that was it. I threw yeah. away the rest. Yeah. So, uh, well, actually, so this brings me back to this. So can you okay. read it? The little book of Kazen? Kazen. You yeah. heard of Kazen? No, tell me. Okay. So apparently uh, the Japanese art of transformation one small step at a time. Cool. Three steps. What, uh, so apparently this Kazen method was used by Toyota manufacturer and uh, it incorporates a lot of stuff that we've heard about before. The why, what is your why? Yeah. But it asks you to go down uh, a path of asking yourself, why am I doing this? Is it really necessary for me to do this? Am I sabotaging my own life, my own goal? So there's, um, so, so I've been reading. It asks you to focus and ask you to look deep into what your motives are. What is the real reason you're doing this? So instead of, so, so I has funny example. So there is one example about uh, Sonia ate my cake. But why? Because I left it out. So the solution would be put the cake away or don't yeah. have the cake. But why does it bother you? Because you don't want her to eat your cake. Well, why does it bother you? Well, I, I kind of like to share, but why, but why and why? And then at some point it's like, oh, because I lack the ability to put a boundary. And why do you lack the ability to put a boundary? It's because you don't respect yourself enough or whatever. So, uh, so, so far it's been very good. It also has uh, little pointers on how to make little change, but also to look at the whole thing to figure out if, uh, so you have to change little things, but maybe you have to 
change the little thing in a system because the system is not working. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's a lot, it's a little book, but it's got a lot of stuff in it. And uh, so I've been slowly working at it, you know? Um, uh, I think sometimes we don't uh, realize how much time we might be wasting at doing things that really don't do it, serve our goal. Yeah. And, and it's, I think it, it, it points to the fact that it's very hard to always stay conscious of, of the goal. So anyway, so this year, this is the work we're doing in all areas of life. Excellent. Excellent. You know, and I said that, that that was a nice segue. And I realized that I forgot to say why it was a nice segue, because one of my one of my affirmations, one of my mantras this year, when things happen, especially like if I have a little ache or a pain or whatever, you know, you're saying your body's aging. Well, my my 2021 thing is I have the body of a 20 year old. So instead of saying, oh, you know, this hurts, I'm getting old. I just say I have the body of a 20 year old. I have the body of a 20 year old. And so we'll see if by the end of the year. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I'll try that. Definitely. I'm going to try that. <laughs> and, and actually, this is something that came up, um, you know, when I used to go dancing and people would, would say, oh, how old are you? And, oh, but I would say in my heart, I'm only 35. And this year it's like, but it's because there hasn't been a lot of the fun 35 year old stuff being done. <laughs> <laughs> but there's still a lot of stuff to be done yeah absolutely right well and that's it i actually i had some stuff this year that or last year sorry that i wanted to do that really couldn't i mean i suppose i could have done them with covid but it just didn't really you know like i wanted to to, to uh, get better at dancing for example well yeah you could dance by yourself yes, in the you living room. You can practice all you, you want know. by yourself. <laughs> but that just didn't really, wasn't really feeling that, you know. <laughs> yes, it's, it's kind of difficult to dance when the, the brooms don't don't lead very well. <laughs> exactly. So I could have totally like got good at my steps and, you know, whatever and done all that stuff. But I just, yeah, I, I, I one of the reasons I want to be a good dancer is for the social aspect, not, you know, not so that I can dance around my living room like a fool, you know. Right, right, exactly. I want to improve my dancing too, but I want to improve it dancing with people. I mean, yeah, exactly. the, and, 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 but the, the good thing, and I've seen the, I've said that in a couple of my groups, my dancing group is uh, we're all going to be bad when we go back. So <laughs> we're all going to be rusted and, and we're going to be so happy that we're going to be making mistakes, but you know, it's all yeah. fine. But of yeah. course, yes. Yeah. So is there anything, you know, you, it's even like, so we're starting 2021, but we're also ending 2020. Is there anything that you sort of do to kind of put it to bed, you know, just to kind of say, okay. Uh, no, I don't feel like I need to put anything to bed. Uh, I don't think there's anything in my life that, that really needs to be Put to bed. I, I somehow feel that I'm doing little things that are always improving my life. But having to say, "Oh, I really need to drop this," maybe a bad attitude, but <laughs> you know about about certain things. But apart from that, no, I don't need to drop friends. I like all the people I hang out with. Um, I don't need to. Well, maybe declutter a little bit. Yes, I have a tendency to gather a little bit of that. So that's got to drop. But this this long-term stuff that, uh, do you feel you have to drop something? No, I, I just, I, I just meant to like mentally to kind of close the year. You know what I mean? And I do, I actually, yesterday, you'd never be able to know by looking at the house, but because I've had people working here and there's an inch of dust on everything that yesterday I just and that everything's in the wrong place you know because like someone's working in a room so I have to take everything out of that room and put it someplace mm -hmm. else and so it was just like it, it, literally and, and it's not even it's a little better now but you, you would have to like go sideways to get through certain areas you know and so 
yet yesterday I just like started tearing the, I started at one corner of the house and just started tearing things apart, putting things away, organizing things, you know, just getting rid of stuff. I'm putting things on marketplace to get, you know, just to get them out of the house. And th that's part of my like, starting the year, ending the year type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, like this is the way, like, I don't want to spend, I don't want to start this year with, you know, I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of superstitious about it. Right. I'm like, I don't want to start this year with crap everywhere. I don't want to start this year with dust everywhere. You know, I want to start off and, you know, da, 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 and get, because you know, but I don't know if all the listeners know that I have been renovating my house for the last God knows how long. <laughs> It's been a while. Well, for, yeah. So first, and, I was, and moving stuff from one house to the other, to the other place, to the other place. Yeah, there's been yeah. a lot of movement of stuff. Yes, and and getting rid of stuff. I did get rid of a lot of stuff, and I have a lot more that needs to go. And that's part of the process is just like looking at and reviewing and saying, okay, is this something that should stay? Is this something that fits with this house? You know, but. Yeah, so I had a single family house and I turned it into a two family house and the other side is rented and that's perfect, right? I house hacked, I have an income stream that, you know, the passive income, that's what my, that's my mantra. Hey, passive income, passive income. So, yes, so yeah, my, my next door neighbors are adding to my passive income stream, but you know, because of that, obviously my space was cut in half and all the focus was on the other side and getting that done and getting that ready to be rented. And, and so for the past, I started renting that in, in June, as soon as the moratorium on short-term rentals lifted, which I think was June 9th, I started renting that side of the house. So ever since then, I've been in the not finished <laughs> part of the house. And, you know, first we were working on the deck because that also was going to benefit the people who were staying, you know, it's the focus was all about the, the, uh, Airbnb guests and not at all about me. So I just today have a shower. Uh, yesterday was the first time I was able to shower in my own, you know, in this particular bathroom, which used to just be a half bath. And I have to say, I love, I mean, of course, I love being able to not have to drive to East Boston every time I want to take a shower. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but also I love that, that you know, it's, I've always had tub showers. But because this is a regular, just a shower, it's wider than a tub shower. And I just love it. It feels so nice and, you know, Me. big. Yeah. That's good. But actually, you're right. I, I am also in a kind of a declar decluttering path, which kind of started last year. Um, but again, this is a continuous thing. So it's not something that I'm leaving behind to move on to something else. This is a continuing thing. I feel like maybe if we have this conversation next year, that might be very different because next year I might have been able to compartmentalize things and say, okay, this is no longer needed. I will not need it in the future because also the future is a little uncertain right now. Why is the future uncertain? I, because I don't know, we don't know how long we're going to be like this, you know, with this. Um, the vid? Huh? <laughs> I heard some kids calling it the vid. <laughs> the vid. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> this thing of staying home. But thank, thank, thanks to good friend. Like I had to have other people go grocery shopping for me this week, which is good and bad but uh you know hopefully actually i think there's lessons to be learned in all this stuff always 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 you know what occurred yes. to me like everybody was all about 2020 like oh 2020 clear vision blah 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 yeah but it occurred to me and one of the reasons it occurred to me is because i edit the transcripts you know from these things and every time tw it's 2020 it does 20 comma 20. And I thought, that's it. Exactly. You're in a holding pattern. It's like 20, yeah. 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, we're, we're in this like ugh, broken record kind of thing. And now it, finally it's like 2021. 20, oh, we're moving on. Oh, great. You know? <laughs> yes, you're right. Actually, 2020 was supposed to be my year. It was the year of the metal rat, which I am. 
<laughs> and all that stuff. So it has had some many good things. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. It, it was kind of rolling in the roll, you know, but it was like it had to roll in one place for one year, you know? Well, yeah, and, and it was a good time to prepare, I think, mm -hmm. right? To, to, like, to look at your life and say, do I like this life? Am I happy? I know a lot of people who changed their business model, who, you know, left their job or, you know, were forced to leave their jobs, but then they started a new job, you know, like for themselves, they started working for themselves. There was... Yeah. Uh, there were more small businesses started last year than any time in the past 13 years. So that's, you know, a lot of people, were, yeah, you pivot, you know, you just like, well, okay, that isn't working. I've got this time now. Why don't I, whatever, become a mask so or whatever, but no, a lot of people just were able to start something new, which is awesome. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. And, uh, but this year, yeah, I, I feel for myself that, I have, I have already accomplished, last year I accomplished a lot of the things I wanted to accomplish. You know, I got the tiny house up and running. That's yeah. been a great passive income stream. And I got the place next door up and running. That's another passive income stream. So I added two properties and this is gonna be a third one, actually a fourth one. But uh, so that's all awesome and, and that's, as you know, like I said, I'm all about the passive income stream, but also um, just for thinking about stuff, you know, just being like, okay, am I happy in this situation? I had a big giant uh, time when I, you know, I did that drive to Florida mm -hmm. and I spent those. So I, if you don't, I, I think I might've talked about this before, but you know, if you're listening and you don't know what I'm talking about, I, I, I went to a conference in October, right? Was it October or November? It might've been November. It was November. And uh, in, in Florida on Singer Island, it was like a, a retreat. And I said, hey, I'm doing it. I don't care, COVID be damned. I'm going on this retreat. And, and I decided to, because I, for some reason, since this COVID started, I had been dying to do a road trip. So I decided to drive and I'm like, all right, I'm driving to Florida. And I had plenty of time, obviously, because everything's just <laughs> virtual. I can do stuff from anywhere. I did some podcast interviews from rest areas and <laughs> stuff like that. So um, I just took seven days to drive down there, really took my time, you know, visited a bunch of different cities and just had a, but, but the part of what I wanted to do during that time was just to make some really hard decisions about, about my life and my relationships and stuff. And, and I'm that kind of reflective time. I did that in a lot of areas, you know, do, you know, okay, I'm doing this thing. Do I like doing this thing? I'm doing, you know, and that's, I think 2020 was good for that. And now it's 2021 and we can move on. <laughs> that, that, definitely a year of reflection there's no doubt about it no doubt about it we had no choice <laughs> well yes that's the other thing although for the whole part of the year i didn't have to quarantine except at the beginning of the new one <laughs> <laughs> so is that you have but now is you have to quarantine because of home depot but are they requiring that you totally quarantine or you just stay out of work uh, no, I'm supposed to totally quarantine because technically I've been exposed. Yeah. Hmm. So, so it's, it would be um, not nice for me to, with the chance of possibly be having been exposed to go out and possibly expose other people. Even or, though you tested negative. Even though I tested negative, right. It's not because I'm testing negative that I'm not because there are people that are infected or, or, you know, there's a timeline issue there or something like that. But I think, and this is where it gets really complicated. I think I read on the CDC that 14 days after your initial positive test, whether you've had symptoms or not, you shouldn't be contagious anymore. Okay. I think. Interesting. I think this is what I understood. 
So we'll see. We'll get retested this week, I guess. I don't know. I'm when I'm we're done. I'm gonna go quiz what the government said to Arbor. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Well, that's good. I mean, yes. you know, quarantine is supposed to be good for the soul, right? <laughs> Yeah, actually, I cooked a little bit more than I usually do. So, yep. yeah. and it, yeah, it is. There's no doubt about it. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of. It's like you realize that your tiredness is not really physical; it's mental, and 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 that uh, yeah, all these questions are definitely soul searching that you have to do that i guess we don't do often enough because we're too busy right. on a regular day basis right true mm -hmm. but i know you know a lot of people are anxious to put 2020 behind them but i don't i don't hate 2020 it was different me neither but yeah i don't i don't have any bad feelings toward it <laughs> me neither i don't have bad feelings yeah. I miss I miss my kids are making me realize that you know being away from them has got a, a price to be paid you know yeah you can't pop down there you can't pop down. You, you know when I when I just went back to Florida last week the the round trip was 65 bucks I know it's ridiculous so it's worth it for 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 me to go anytime exactly as soon as you get yeah. your test and and then they didn't when you come home you, they'll want you to test again because that was yeah. just the deal either that or quarantine for for only 10 days good yes the, 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 so there's there's changes in the uh there's changes in the timeline and uh it's difficult to understand and i, I went on the cdc website and i have to say that the information is still very um confusing yeah I think there's still a lot of things they don't know. Right, exactly. Even now. Mm -hmm. How many months into this thing? Yes. Yes, well, it takes a long time to analyze all this data. Eh, well, we have supercomputers, don't we? <laughs> They're not that super, I guess. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, some of the issue might be uh, the data, the, the gathering of the data, you know, because uh, before like now it's easy to get tested but but um who was it that got it? somebody told me they had it in march and they she couldn't get tested yeah march it was hard yeah way back in march it wasn't impossible to get tested now i every other day i can go and get tested in the over here in winthrop i mean yeah yeah it took five minutes so it's it's a different it's a whole different thing and then some people are getting vaccinated now so god knows what that's gonna do yeah i don't know about that um you know you know the spanish flu obviously is the best i think the best comparison for us to kind of use as far as like what's gonna what would what to expect from this Mm -hmm. I feel it is because it was the last really big, like real pandemic like this. And so when you look at that, cause I, that's what I did. I said, okay, how did the Spanish flu finally stop? <laughs> right. How come we're not, how come everybody didn't croak, you know? And so, and basically that's what happened. People either died or they, you know, developed an immunity either by having it and getting over it or just by being exposed to it enough to where their body builds up an immunity and i really think vaccine or no vaccine vaccine that that's what's going to have to happen to us and right. i i mean i looked at some if you look at the graphs mm -hmm. of like you know how many cases there are versus how many deaths there are mm -hmm. there are there are there seem to be if i'm reading the graphs properly it seems like there are even though there are a lot more people now who have the virus there are a fraction of the deaths that there were back in March. So I do think that as that either the vaccine is weakening or we are strengthening. I mean, I think if you've been out at all, right, you, it's in the air, you're absorbing it a little bit. And so your body is, you know, doing a, a little bit of, of a little bit of a whatever, building up some resistance to it. So even if you do eventually get it um, because of, 
I think because of this bombardment, which is one of the things I was reading about, that you're someplace with someone who has it and you spend a lot of time with them. So your body doesn't have a chance. You know, you get too much. Your body doesn't have a chance to, come, yeah. to uh, fight it. So when, but when, even when you finally get it, you, it's not as serious. I mean, I bet you have a ton of resistance because you're, you know, you're in home Depot a day. You're getting, yeah. you're breathing so in that air, right? That's why I was thinking that because, you know, at some point me and Oliver weren't that careful in the house because we didn't know. So there was a period of time without knowing, but the fact that I'm still testing negative makes me think that maybe if there was some contamination, I just fought it off and that's why it's not showing up in my. Yeah. And, and that makes sense to me. Cause like I said, you've been, even though you've had your mask on obviously and things yeah. like that, there have been, I'm sure a lot of people in and out of home Depot who have it so when you're walking down the aisles and that's probably why i don't have it because i'm also in home depot all the time so you know when you're walking down the aisles you're you're breathing in a little tiny bit of it and then your body is saying oh foreign invader da, 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 and then it's attacking yeah. it so that you know and i think that's what's happening i think it was sweden that i was reading about that they think that because sweden never shut anything down right. everybody was able to do their thing they wore masks and they respected social distancing but they never shut anything down in their economy and they right. believed, and this was months ago, they said that they thought that the country had developed herd immunity to where that just because they've all just got a little bit of it, right, that they that they now can fight it off. So mm -hmm. I really think regardless of the vaccine, I think that we're all going to, maybe not all of us, right? Some of us have been home and have not left the house. Right. I, I've been out a lot. I've yeah. been out a lot. I've been on planes. I've been in, you know, the cars and driving on, you know, just. I <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand. And that's, that's yeah. So the, all these things without, without having a blood test or without having access, like, I mean, I haven't seen my doctor. She deferred the, my, my annual checkup this year. So yeah, there's a, there's not much, there's not much I, I, I know or can say or understand or whatever. So well, I, I think even if you were at the CDC, I think you'd be saying the same thing. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's changing, it's morphing, it's you know mutating. It's mutating. It's so mutated a couple of times already. There's no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So, but I do like even play people where my mom is. You know, she's senior housing. There are people there. Are, I mean, there have been several of her uh, people who live in the same places her she there now are nine cases there and these are people in their 80s 90s and they're getting better they're good they're getting better oh, they haven't they've had one death and that yeah. person so so i think a lot of that has to do with the people that are treating people understanding the you know the whole thing much better how to treat it what and and to realize how uh the person that gets it how the virus really attacks their body, you know, because yeah. obviously, apparently, it, it's not just the lungs, sometimes it's in the bloodstream or whatever. So uh, I think that that's one of the reasons why the mortality rate went down. But yeah, I, I agree with you. There's probably we're probably working on this herd immun immunity pretty fast. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. But so what do you think? Uh, what advice would you give to people who are like, uh, feeling kind of despondent or like bummed about 2020 and, and or, or uh, thinking that 2021 is, is, you know, that we're still coming into this in 2021. What are we going to do? I don't know. Any, any, is there any advice that you'd like to give our listeners? Amy? Oh my God. No, I'm, I don't, I don't build myself as a guru. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, just, uh, Actually, I think I think this year was great for that. Doing a lot of internal work is what you're doing really working for you. Is it what you want? Now's the time to really have a good assessment to that. And if we're still stuck inside, well, maybe you should continue or work on the on the next step. Yeah, yeah, that's good advice. You know, one of the things I, I don't know, you just reminded me when you said that. That one of the things I did this year, last year, that I'm really excited about was um, getting my it? certified life coaching certificate. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really had fun with that. I think I told you, I, I originally thought that I would just use it in my real estate business, you know, use it yeah. to help people, you know, with, to kind of make sure I understood their goals, make sure I was asking good questions in a good way to solicit the most information and stuff. But I really enjoyed just being, just doing it, just helping people and, and having, seeing people have breakthroughs and, you know, facilitating their goals and stuff. And so I don't know, I might, I think I, I'm not going to say I might, I am going to make that part of my, part of my life. Now I'm going to, I'm actually practicing with other students who, who uh, graduated with me. Oh, and, and so I thought I was the guinea pig. You, well, you absolutely can be the guinea pig. <laughs> but I, but I, they're in a better position to, no, actually that's not true. You're also in a fantastic position to say to me, this is what felt good. This is what didn't feel good. You should have focused a little bit on, more on this, whatever. So yeah, and, and any listeners who are interested in having free life coaching, <laughs> just say, give me a call. <laughs> That's cool. But um, actually what made what brought up what popped in my mind when you were talking about saying you wanted to use the life coach with the real estate, it's it's starting to occur to me that uh, maybe we should stop being so focused on being one thing, you know, uh, because all of our experiences bring many different things to to the table you know you so understanding people where people are going in their real estate goals and in their life then maybe you can help them better to pick a house or or a property or whatever and i was just thinking about that like so now at home depot i design kitchen but you know, just plopping a brand new kitchen where there used to be an old one might not be the right thing if you, that's not the way you live, you know? And and so understanding more things uh, that touch on a subject, I think helps a lot. It's like, um, I don't, I don't uh, I'm, I'm sure we could look at, all kinds of, uh, uh, I don't know, Elon Musk, you know? <laughs> uh, and so, so he seems to be doing a lot of different things uh, that are not all related. Oh, absolutely. He's right? all over the place, right? So he's all over the place. And, and because he's all over the place, he can come up with these really new things. And, and I think that if you're too... Um, super focused on one thing, uh, you lose, you lose, you lose the, in, in your, the quality of, of what you bring. If you bring all of the aspects together, then you're bringing a better package. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there, it, it's very easy when you do one thing and you know it really well. I mean, how are you how are you learning more about that? Probably you're studying someone who's already done it and that you, you fall, you, have, you run the risk of falling into a group think type of mentality or this is the way we've always done it type of mentality. Whereas if you have completely different ideas about all kinds of stuff and you've been really educating yourself on all the different aspects of it, you are more likely, I think, to be innovative, to be coming up with something that no one would really think of if that's all they did was stay in that space there you go you hit it you hit it on the yeah, yeah definitely because yeah that's exactly it. It, it oh we've always done it that way really it doesn't always work <laughs> things change things evolve you know we've always had mom at home and dad working well you know maybe that didn't work that well so now we do it differently you know and 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 yeah yeah so uh, yeah, I think we need to, this is a good year to start changing the way we think. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you say about being different things, because I actually, when I think about myself, like, I just put out on LinkedIn that I, I reactivated my home improvement contractor's license. Uh -huh. And people are all like, oh, congratulations on the new role and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, I, it's a new role because I didn't, yeah, I had let my certificate lapse, but actually it's not that new because I've always been 
doing home improvement and helping my clients, you know, visualize how they could use their spaces and stuff. So, you know, I've, I've come, if somebody, when you, you know, you look at the, uh, you come back into the country from somewhere and they say, and there's that line that says profession. I always think, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I so said that now I put retired. Oh, that's <laughs> that's a good I'm not, one, actually. But, but you know, a friend, another friend of mine used to write artist. That was her thing all the time. Oh, artist. that's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great idea. Yeah, I like it. What do you do for a living? Uh, I don't know. I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> Exactly. Like this is only, there's only one. There's only room for like three jobs here. I'm really going to need another sheet. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, maybe uh, maybe that's been the thing all along. Uh, so I, when I think back uh, a long, long time ago, people used to look up to older people yeah. for advice and mentoring and um, we still should we have so much and, we, and i think it, that's one of the You're reasons awesome. is because yeah. it's because the older you are the more experienced you are so the more things you bring together to answer a question exactly exactly or more solution possibilities yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah very and, good and that's a fun thing actually is being mentor and mentee to people you know, right? There's some people who I learn from and some people who I teach, and that's just the perfect, perfect Some marriage. people you're just friends with. <laughs> yes. And you use as guinea pigs. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, anytime you want a coaching session, just call me anytime you want to, you know, because that's what, I mean, it will help me to have recurring things, right? So I have to make sure I follow up with you and say, last time we talked, you said you were going to do X, Y, Z. How did that go? You know, so. uh, still, still not doing the thing I should be doing. <laughs> but that's okay. That's all good. It's not, it's not a life or death thing. All right. No, we just go. How are we going to meet our goals? Yeah. Yeah. But it's important to have them. That's the oh, definitely. Thing. That's the first thing. You need you need a target if you want to hit something. Yep, exactly. You need a dream if you want to have a dream come true. That's what they yes, say. yes. Okay. Anything you're looking forward to in 2021? Ah, uh, travel. Traveling. Yes. <laughs> Traveling. Anything, anything you're particularly proud of from 2020? No, just the, all the insight. Yeah. Just just all the insight. And uh, more work on, yeah, I think more, I guess more mental work would be the, the, the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I personally, so I have realized that there's still plenty of time. The question is, what should I concentrate on of all the million things I've always wanted to do? <laughs> you know, there's, I know, there's so many things. That, Enjoy uh, my clarity mastermind. My my friend has a clarity mastermind, and we're getting clarity. Oh, well, I think you've invited me to this before. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm oh, the other to... thing I should say before we close out, because obviously we're coming to the end of our time together, and I'm going to close us out. But um, tomorrow, Martin Luther King's birthday is another. Uh, installment episode occurrence whatever of uh real of the class that the free online virtual class that i have which is real estate investing is it for you that's happening and you can find the link on eventbrite and i'll also put it into the text of the podcast and after that because people were feeling i think a little bit like they would take the class they'd be all excited but then it's like Oh, like now I, I feel like I want to do it, but I don't really feel confident like I'm going to go out today and buy a place. Right. So now I'm starting to mastermind. So after people get out of the class, they can start to do this 12 week mastermind where we're going to do everything from 
getting our credit in shape all the way through to evaluating properties and eventually buying buying a property so oh cool excited about that yeah that's yeah it's gonna be cool sounds cool i, I should attend that, that one sorry i should attend that one you should absolutely oh definitely yeah i'm gonna have to find time i know and if you Don't miss get... january if you miss the january one so it's the third monday in january and then it's going to be the third tuesday the third wednesday the third thursday so you know for the next four yeah. months it's going to move one day and then it's going to come back to monday can i, I be put some on some kind of reminder thing yeah i'll put a little thing on facebook i'll put something on the in the text of the podcast and i guess i'll just have to call you and remind you yes that would be a good thing for me <laughs> Or actually, it would be smart of me to, when you tell me, put it on the calendar. Yes. So listeners, take that, take Emery's advice right now. Put it on your calendar and go to Eventbrite to, to uh, get the link or go to the podcast and things to get the link to attend the, the seminar, webinar, because it's a lot of fun and it's free. And it, a lot of your questions will be answered about house hacking, about Airbnb, about flips about buy and hold about whatever so so i see emory is writing it down i suggest you do the same thing yeah because it's you know i forget yes <laughs> but i want to thank you so much for being with me today emory and i want to and uh telling My us favorite. about the book tell me the book again the little book of kaizen 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 oh, it's, it's such it's a little tiny thing <laughs> The Little Book of Kaizen. The Little Book of Kaizen. Cool. The Japanese Art of Transformation, One Small Step at a Time. Excellent. So that sounds like a nice book to start. The you froze. Say that again. I said your video froze. Yeah, we, had, we must have had a little whatever hiccup. No, no, it's my, my internet connection is unstable. Oh, OK. So thank you, Emery, for being with okay. me today. So I will sign out yeah. before. No, you can just stay. I'm going to end the recording. It's all good. My yeah, pleasure. <laughs> and thank you, listener, okay. for listening. Thank really, you. Thank you, Feedspot, for making us number 27 on the 70 best podcasts in the uh, early retirement and financial independence space. And be sure to be here next week when we're going to close out our series on starting 2021 on the right foot we'll, with Anne McNeil, who's going to tell us about her 10 aspects of life that we need to be focusing on and tell us some of the questions that she has on her life survey and where you can get a copy of her life survey so you can make sure your life is all set. And um, be sure, I, I'm sure, I think that there's somebody who you know who could benefit from the podcast. So please share it with them. And please come back next week. Thank you. Have a wonderful week.